Hello everyone this is part 4 of what if Naruto leaves Kanoa and joins Akatsuki, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. Six days have now passed since the end of the second exam. Nazashi was contemplating deep in the forest, to prepare for the upcoming battle tomorrow. Damn it, I need to get the mission over with, thought Nazashi half angrily. The problem is that it has to be done in one hit, get in, do the mission and get out of there and the village. But I really don't need to attract the extra attention of half the village, so it needs to be done stealthily, but I can't even approach the place, so I'm back to the beginning of forceful entry and way too much attention. Nazashi has just been racking his head for several days like this since Itachi's brief appearance. I'm getting anxious, something's going to happen tomorrow, something favorable, mused Nazashi. Maybe I should a bit more sleep, it is 3 in the morning, and with that Nazashi headed back to his hotel room. The next day Nazashi showed up to the stadium with as little time to spare as he could without being subject for disqualification. The rest of the ninjas were already there, standing in the middle patiently waiting to start the matches. As Nazashi got closer he distinctly heard Shikamaru complaining, man it's so troublesome that my match is first, Nazashi had to try very hard not to burst out laughing right there. He then noticed Sasuke eyeing him suspiciously, hey you're not late this time around. Nazashi was inwardly amused, and is that a small hint of fear that I see in your eyes, Sasuke? Nazashi kept his cold demeanor while smiling inwardly. Nazashi looked up to see exactly who would be watching these matches. He, of course, saw the god I'm Hokage, old hag as Nazashi referred to her inwardly, Kakashi, he's probably here for his prize student, scowled Nazashi, Guy, Kurenai, Sakura, here for her precious Sasuke-kun, Shino, Tenten, and several other Junin and Chunin. Where the hell is Lee? Wondered Nazashi, but decided to just shrug it off. We will now begin the third test of this Junin exam, exclaimed Asuma. The first match is, Nara Shikamaru vs. Sumato of the Mist. The rest of the fighters please wait up in the waiting room and not the stands. Shikamaru and Sumato walked to the opposite ends of the stadium, while the rest of the fighters slowly made their way to the waiting booth. Do you think Shikamaru will win? Asked Sakura. I know what you're thinking, but he knows when he needs to be serious even if he's lazy the rest of the time, replied Kakashi. Thought I'm still worried about him, Miss Nin can be very tricky. Once everyone, minus the current fighters, was up in the waiting room, Asuma yelled, begin. The Miss Nin instantly performed a few seals and a thick fog spread out over the entire arena. Unlike Shikamaru, the Miss Nin knew exactly where his opponent was. The Miss Nin pulled out several shuriken and threw them at Shikamaru. Shikamaru heard the shuriken flying through the air and managed to dodge them, although realizing that he was at a disadvantage, as if he stays long range like this I have no chance to win. The Miss Nin took out a few more shuriken and while running around his opponent in a circle threw the shuriken at him. Shikamaru of course dodged the first few and instantly figured out what the Miss Nin was doing, hence could easily parry the other shuriken with his kunai. So, he started to move, thought Shikamaru, he'll probably be moving into close range combat soon, I must prepare. Shikamaru extended his shadow all around him. Damn it not enough water around here to do any good water jutsus. I'll have to settle this in close combat, deduced Sumito. Again he started running in a circle around his opponent throwing shuriken at him, except this time once he got right behind Shikamaru he lunged straight at him with a kunai. He's doing the same trick with the shuriken again, unless he's really stupid he must realize that it doesn't work. So logically he's using this as a distraction to run in a semi-circle and get behind me. Shikamaru then moved his shadow so that it covered the ground in back of him a lot more than in front. The Miss Nin, absolutely unaware of the Nara family ability, kept running straight for his opponent with absolute stealth. Just as the Leaf Nin came into view and Sumito was going to commence his plan, he realized that even though he was supposed to be running that Shikamaru wasn't getting any closer. What the hell? I was just running a second ago, could it be Genjutsu? Wondered the Miss Nin. 
Just as Sumito was about to move his arms into the proper position to dispel the genjutsu, he found that his arms seemed to be bound by something. Gotcha, said Shikamaru in a flat tone, as he turned sideways so that he could see the Mist Nin and the Mist Nin could see him. Before Sumito could even say anything Shikamaru continued, Shadow Neck Bind no Jutsu. Sumito saw the shadowy hand slowly crawl all the way up his body to his neck. The last thing the Mist Nin saw was the coldness of Shikamaru's eyes as his neck snapped. The mist cleared to show Shikamaru standing over the lifeless body of the Mist Nin, in that same non-caring pose that he usually does. Winner, Nara Shikamaru, yelled Asuma, proud of his student. He K him, thought Nazashi, didn't think Shikamaru had it in him, or maybe something motivated him, the image of Eno's B. Sakura and Tenten gasped, was this really the same Shikamaru they knew? Their Shikamaru seemed to never be able to even win anything except Shugi and Go. But now this, he had K his opponent mercilessly. Could Ino's death have affected him more than we thought? Wondered Tenten. Looks like Shikamaru grew up, thought Guy, yet he didn't have to K his opponent. When the arena was once again cleared, Asuma announced, the next match, Hugo Hanata vs. Haikoma of the Cloud. Both fighters jumped down to the floor of the stadium and stood apart from each other. Begin, yelled Asuma. Hanata instantly activated her Byakugan and went into the gentle fist fighting stance. The Cloud Nin remained standing in her loose fighting stance, but prepared herself to throw Shuriken and Kunai. Hanata, seeing that her opponent wasn't going to attack, decided to jump in and rushed straight for the Cloud Nin. Haikoma instantly threw three chakra enhanced shuriken straight at Hanata and jumped to the side preparing to throw more. Hanata saw that the shuriken had chakra in them, so merely parried them with her chakra enhanced kunai. However when her kunai connected with the shuriken she felt a slight pang of pain in hand, but decided to ignore it. The cloud nin, meanwhile, noticed Hanata grimace a little when the shuriken connected with the kunai, but happily noted that her opponent didn't understand what had happened. Good. The less she knows about my chakra the better, especially since she has the Byakugan. Hanata noticed that her opponent seemed to want to stay away from her and would rather fight long range. Alright then, I'll just have to increase my speed a little bit more and catch up to her, mused Hanata as she transferred more chakra into her legs. So it's true, thought the Cloud Nin, the Hyuga mostly only fight close range and don't really know any long range jutsus. The Cloud Nin then performed several seals, Raten, Lightning Bolt no Jutsu, and from out of her right hand lightning shot forth heading straight for Hanata. Hanata was forced to stop her assault and dodge to the lightning, which continued straight and eventually hit the wall behind her. Haikoma performed a longer list of seals, Raten, Lightning Bolt Strike. Five lightning bolts shots out from Haikoma's fingers. Her chakra is being heavily concentrated to her right hand only, analyzed Hanata, I guess that is the only place she can shoot it out from. Hanata being unable to dodge these simply waited for them to get closer and prepared herself. Chitin, she cried once the lightning bolts were close enough and spun around making her chakra form a sphere around her and completely deflecting the lightning. Those are pretty low-level lightning jutsus, commented Nazashi, though she seems to have some sort of plan. Kakashi sensei, how does she shoot lightning out of her fingers like that? Asked Sakura. I'm surprised you don't know, Sakura, Kadnin are well known for being able to convert their chakra into electric energy and emit it from their fingers, explained Kakashi. Also because they have used lightning for so many centuries, they are naturally born with the ability to generate it, added Kuranai. As soon as she came out of her chitin, Hanata made a rush at the Cloud Nin and managed a clean hit, while the Cloud Nin's shock hadn't worn yet. Hanata managed to hit the Cloud Nin in her right shoulder closing off an opening point, making it impossible to send Chakra to the right hand. Good I knew she was going to press this one, now to play along with her, thought Haikoma. She proceeded to make it look like she trying to channel Chakra to her arm but failing miserably. Hanata saw this as an opportunity to do her 64 hands of the hack, and finish off the match. Hanata got into the appropriate stance, but just as she was about to begin her opponent started performing a long list of seals. The most horrifying thing, for Hanata, being that the Cloud Nin was able to channel Chakra into her right arm, impossible I had just closed it. Before Hanata could react, Haikoma finished her seals, put her hands together such that the wrists were touching and fingers were outstretched and yelled, 
Raten, Spiral no Jutsu. A bolt of lightning shot out from every single finger and formed together into a spiral, which then shot out at an incredible speed straight into Hanata. Lighting spiral, seen it done by Raiko Sensei, I wasn't able to learn it though. For some reason I can't combine the lightning from my left and right hand with stability, commented Nazashi. The spiral hit Hanata in the middle of the chest, making the rest of her body shudder uncontrollably as the electricity caroused its way through Hanata's body. Considering that the impact came so close to the H, Hanata had lost consciousness soon after. Winner, Haikoma of the Cloud, said Asuma. Any more power or any closer to the H, and Hanata would have been D, thought Nazashi, but she wasn't going for AK. Sakura and Tenten were worried for the close friend, they had, not too long ago, lost Ino and they didn't want to lose Hanata too. The medical team rushed to the scene and quickly carried the Hyuga heiress away. Shino was just watching quietly, but internally was also worried for his former teammate. That attack seems like a likely candidate for what happened to Kiba and Akamaru. The latter D instantly from it, but there's not doubt that Kiba took that attack and was K by something else entirely. Kakashi contemplated, still trying to figure out who had K those five leaf nin during the first exam. Out of eleven we are down to two, mused Guy, however Sasuke's fight is yet to be fought. Guy grimaced at the thought of what could happen to the Uchiha. Nazashi could already sense the tension that his and Sasuke's fight was creating. Wait people, wait, you'll get to see your precious, last survivor of the Uchiha, fall from grace soon enough. Inside Nazashi was boiling over with Kei intent at the young Uchiha, hoping that the next match wouldn't take too long. The third match will now take place, Sato of the Sand vs. Kurono of the Snow, yelled Asuma. Both participants jumped down and waited for the match to start. Begin, yelled Asuma. Kurono instantly regathered the mist from the previous match, except this one was less thick and seemed to swirl around. Suddenly it got colder in the stadium and close to freezing down in the arena. Geez, forcing me to use my chakra to keep warm, complained Nazashi slightly. Well that's a snow nin for ya, they specialize in manipulating ice and snow. Sort of like Haku, his bloodline was a cross between a mist bloodline and a snow bloodline. Meanwhile the sand nin found himself shivering, since he wasn't used to cold weather. He tried to use a wind attack to scatter the mist, but only added to the cold. Go ahead, keep attacking me with your wind, thought the snow nin, my attack is heavily based on wind and unless he figures that out he won't be able to counter. But I better not give the chance anyway. Kurono rushed at Sato while performing several seals, when she got close to him she said, Yukaten, ice touch no jutsu. A, N, Yuki means snow, Kurono began wildly attacking Sato with mostly punches, the one thing the San Nin didn't notice was that Kurono's hands changed to a slightly bluish color. After several minutes of a taijutsu fight the snow Nin backed off from her opponent. The San Nin now noticed that the wherever his opponent struck him with her hands it was slightly frostbitten. Considering that she had hit him all over his arms and upper torso, his movements were impaired quite a bit. Everyone seems to have liked my pressure point techniques and is modifying their own styles for a similar effect, mused Nazashi a little annoyed that his style was being copied. They are so far from the Kyusho Dimak style, it's just funny. Kurono, meanwhile, had already started performing a long list of seals. When she finished she put her fingers to her lips and whispered, Yukaten, ice shards. The sand nin was already at a considerable disadvantage because of the frostbite and the unrelenting, cold bringing mist that kept swirling around him. He tried to dodge the shards that were flying at him, but was unable to get clear of all of them. He discovered that the place where the ice shard hit him became numb, s. More frostbitten places on my body. I guess I'll have to try it. Sato performed a list of hand seals as quickly as he could and yelled, Fuuaten, hurricane winds no jutsu. An enormous amount of wind hurled itself at the snow nin, who immediately tried to dodge. Even though she was able to avoid the bulk of the attack, she was still hit by the side winds and thrown toward the wall. The snow nin managed to turn her body around in midair and land on the wall in a crouching position. Not wasting any time and before more wind could hit her, she ran up the wall and stopped near the top. Looking back at her opponent she once again did a long list of seals and yelled, Yukaten, icy whirlwind no jutsu. The water molecules in the rotating mist condensed to form ice shards and the wind speed increased. 
The Sand Nin was unable to dodge or parry all the ice shards that were rotating about him and gradually the spectators could see that the numerous ice shards were turning red. The Snow Nin, meanwhile, hadn't moved from her position was continuing her attack. She's going to K him, thought Asuma, this match is already decided, I should step in now. Asuma then appeared right next to Kurono and grabbed her hands telling her to stop the attack. Kurono looked up and seeing that it was the examiner, nodded slightly and released the attack. As the wind dee down and the ice shards fell to the ground, almost instantly melting in the sun, as soon he registered that it was over he simply fell down to the ground unconscious. Winner, Kurono of the snow, yelled Asuma. Now the fourth and final match, yelled Asuma. He could hear murmuring and rustling of the crowd above him, Uchiha Sasuke versus Nazashi of the grass. While Sasuke jumped down to the arena, Nazashi decided to show off and used a teleportation jutsu to get down, Sasuke scowled at the technique. Up in the stands, you're looking rather confident, said Guy. Why shouldn't I be? Asked Kakashi, Sasuke's a good shinobi. Sasuke's the best, yelled in a Sakura. You're not worried at all, asked Guy. Why should I be? Said Kakashi flatly, the way I remember it Sasuke could beat Lee. While using the Sharingan, countered Guy. Yes, and he can use it right now, unlike your stupid rules, said Kakashi in an amused tone. My rules were very smart, why should people with bloodlines have advantages in Taijutsu? Asked Guy and went on to blabber nonsense, which everyone ignored. You say something? Asked Kakashi when Guy finally quieted down. Ah, yelled Guy in frustration, but never mind that it's not important right now. You do know what style Nazashi was using in the previous exam, right? Asked Guy in a calculated tone already guessing that Kakashi had no idea. Not the style no, but it was something to do with pressure points, that's all I know. But it shouldn't matter Sasuke Sharingan will be able to copy and counter it, replied Kakashi in an arrogant tone. Guy sighed, then allow me to enlighten you, Nazashi was using the Kyusho Dimak style. Kakashi's eyes widened in shock, no way. What is it Kakashi Sensei? Asked Sakura in a worried tone. But that art was lost hundreds of years ago. Questioned Kakashi of the Taijutsu expert. Supposedly, but it seems someone, he motions down at Nazashi, still knows it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the Kyusho Dimak based on very high speed? Asked Kakashi. Yes, it is, replied Guy in a grave tone. Then he wasn't showing his full power at the Taijutsu exam, was he? Kakashi asked in a nervous voice. No, you're right the Kyusho Dimak is based on incredible speed, but for a special reason. The Kyusho Dimak uses combinations of pressure points. To the normal eye it would look like he's pressing one, but in reality he's pressing multiple points. To be able to do that in milliseconds his speed, well, it is most likely faster than even what I can do. Sakura's eyes widened in horror. Because it is based on combinations of pressure points, Sasuke would have to know where the pressure points are to be able to actually use it. The Sharingan although probably able to copy the movements, wouldn't tell where the points are or the exact force to press them with, explained Guy in a serious tone. My god, whispered Kakashi, Sasuke can't fight close range with him then. Exactly, but not only that, we don't know his ninjutsu capabilities either, said Guy. Personally he strikes me as more of a ninjutsu person than taijutsu, said Guy looking over at Nazashi. Well Sasuke is very well versed in ninjutsu and genjutsu, said Kakashi somewhat nervously because of what he had just heard. Plus he can copy that guy's ninjutsus. That's right, Sasuke-kun will definitely win, thought Sakura. I wonder, thought Guy. Back to the arena, Nazashi and Sasuke gazed at each other, each sizing up his opponent. He's too damn calm, thought Sasuke, and that air of absolute confidence, it's too much like Itachi's. Sasuke's frown deepened at the thought of his brother. Begin, yelled Asuma and quickly jumped out of the way. Sasuke quickly formed some seals, Katen, Hausenka, he whispered and five balls of flame sped their way towards Nazashi, who was doing his own seals. To Sasuke's surprise Nazashi did the exact same seals as Sasuke and launched his own five fireballs to counter Sasuke's. Sasuke was even more surprised when the shuriken that he had planted in the fire, clattered down to the ground, deflected by Nazashi's shuriken, which he had also placed into his fireballs. Predictable Sasuke. But how about this? 
Nazashi repeated his previous seals and sent five more fireballs with shuriken at Sasuke. Sasuke calmly prepared to counter-attack the same way Nazashi had done, when something very unexpected happened. Halfway to target the amount of fireballs increased, there were now at least 50 fireballs coming at Sasuke. What the hell? How can he do that? Thought Sasuke. Sasuke had no choice, but to put up a wall, I will temporarily lose sight of him, but there's no other way. Doing several seals and s his palms on the ground Sasuke said, Dotan, earth wall no jutsu, a massive wall rose out of the ground in front of Sasuke, blocking Nazashi's attack. When the fireballs hit, all but five vanished into a puff of smoke. Cage Bushin, asked Kakashi incredulously, unable to hide his amazement, how can he do that to a fire jutsu? The rest of the Junin were equally shocked, Cage Bushin is a forbidden jutsu of this village, how could he know it? Wondered Guy. As soon as Nazashi had seen Sasuke start putting up the wall he did a few seals, stomped his foot on the ground and whispered, Dotan, earth spikes. Everyone was once again shocked when they saw the earth spikes come out of the ground below Sasuke. Better to do it this was so that even if he sees me with his Sharingan he won't be able to copy, since he doesn't know the secret to performing Dotan Jutsus without touching your hands to the ground. Thank you, QB, for telling me to take that scroll from that stone nin. When did he have time to do that jutsu? Asked a shocked Sakura. We must have been completely distracted by the Hausenka to notice, replied Guy uncertainly. He didn't even touch his palms to the ground, mused Kakashi a bit frightened, could that one be a clone? Sasuke had just blocked the fireballs and had now activated his Sharingan, so he could see some chakra forming below him. But still he only had a half a second to jump away before the first spike came out, instantly followed by the next. The spikes seemed to know where he was jumping and followed him quite closely. Nazashi noted that even though Sasuke was avoiding the spikes, he was still watching him intently with his Sharingan. Fine then, we'll see how smart you really are, thought Nazashi as he prepared to ear his plan. Nazashi formed several seals a little slower than usual and placed his palms to the ground, Dotan, land, bind no jutsu. The ground then quickly crawled up Sasuke's legs and solidified, not letting him move. Before Sasuke could react, Nazashi's foot had already connected with the right side of his face and sent him flying into the nearest wall. However right after Sasuke hit the wall, he disappeared in a puff of smoke. So he knows Cage Bushin, the more interesting. Nazashi smirked under his mask. After his clone was destroyed, Sasuke came out of hiding. The crowd gasped, Kakashi smirked and Sakura was overjoyed that Sasuke was able to turn the tables around like that. But their joy did not last long. Ouch, said Nazashi, that hurt, and disappeared in a cloud of smoke. A cage bushin, screamed Sakura as her face twisted from a smile to a frown. All those jutsus were done by a clone, muttered Kakashi unbelievingly. Down below Sasuke was equally surprised, that's impossible a cage bushin is supposed to break as soon as it's hit. How Kakashi sensei, how, yelled Sakura. A Chaka reinforced Cage Bushin, said Kakashi, but if that's the case then where is the real one? Sasuke frantically looked around for his opponent and saw him leaning on tree not too far away. Sasuke made to run, but found that his legs were bound by something. Looking down he saw some sort of vines wrapped around his legs. You shouldn't assume that your opponent is D just because you hit him in a critical area, said Nazashi. Sasuke just glared at him. What the hell? wondered Sasuke, and why isn't he rushing at me like he did last time? Oh I see, he needs a source for these vines, they must be acting as a supplement to the roots of the tree and he'll lose control of them if he breaks control with the tree. Sasuke then did several quick seals and simply said, Katen, Gukaku, and shot a massive fireball straight at Nazashi. So he's figured it out, I could counter, but I'll make it look like I was taken unawares. Nazashi then jumped to the side right before the fireball hit him. Just as Sasuke had predicted the vines instantly let go and not losing a moment's time Sasuke did a few seals s his palms on the ground and said, Dotan, land bind no jutsu. Nazashi expanded his eyes a little bit in an attempt to look shocked, I knew he was gonna copy me. Now will he do what I think he'll do? Sasuke did a few seals, put his right hand over his left elbow, yelled, Chidori, and rushed at full speed towards Nazashi. Yes, Sasuke you are so predictable, a coping idiot just like your teacher, 
laughed Nazashi, but Sasuke couldn't hear his laughter because of the deafening sound of the Chidori. No, he's too calm, Sasuke, yelled Kakashi in his mind. Just as the Chidori was about to contact, Nazashi grabbed Sasuke's wrist and held him there. Sasuke's eyes widened slightly as his Chidori slowly d. Nazashi then whispered so that only Sasuke could hear, Hey Sasuke, deja vu. With that he broke Sasuke's wrist and quickly kicked him into the wall on the other side of the arena. As soon as Sasuke impacted the wall, before Sasuke's body could fall to the ground, he then raised his left hand to his chest, closed his eyes and did several quick one-handed seals. When Nazashi opened his eyes again they weren't blue anymore, Sasuke realized that he had seen those eyes before, but could place it. Nazashi then did a few more hand seals and gazed intently straight into Sasuke's eyes. Sasuke felt as if Nazashi was looking straight through him, all the way to his soul. Nazashi whispered very quietly, Hell, level 2. A, N. Explanation at the bottom, Sasuke screamed out as the jutsu started taking effect and kept screaming as if he was being W, which he was. Nazashi held him like that for 30 seconds waiting for the jutsu to completely envelop him. The spectators were shocked. One minute it looks like Sasuke's going to win no matter what and the next one of his strongest attacks has been counted and he's taking the beating of his life. One-handed seals, mumbled Kakashi, he already had his Sharingan out, but still could not make out what Nazashi was doing. He's transferring a lot of chakra to his eyes, it must be some sort of dujutsu. Then when they heard Sasuke scream out as if he was being tortured, everyone simply cringed. Sakura could not believe that this was happening, the Junin could not understand what Nazashi was doing to him. Sunad leaned forward in her chair and watched in shock as Sasuke continued screaming even after his opponent had let him go and walked away. Winner, Nazashi of the grass, said Asuma in a dazed tone. That one statement snapped everyone out of the daze and they instantly jumped down to aid Sasuke. Even the hockage was down there, examining him. Good. He better get his W treated or they will K him, thought Nazashi amused. We must get him to the hospital immediately, yelled Sunad. Kakashi picked him up and disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Now wrap up this test so that I can go treat him, instructed Sunad. Will the winners please come down to the arena, asked Asuma. The winners did as they instructed, Asuma told to report back here tomorrow, and they were dismissed very soon after. For some reason, Nazashi calmly walked out of the stadium and went to walk around the village. That damn Sasuke, getting special medical attention from the Hokage, I didn't see her do that for Hanata, or anyone else for that matter, mused Nazashi angrily. He walked around for some time and somehow found his way to the north gate. Ha, huh, I remember this place, memories of his escape and liberation from the Leaf Village flashed in Nazashi's mind. That night, five years ago, was the start of something very, very great. He suddenly caught sight of something out of the corner of his eye. It was Hanata, walking towards him, oh yes, I better hide, thought Nazashi as he jumped up to the roof of the closest building and did a jutsu to eliminate his presence. Just please don't let her use the Byakugan, I can hide from that using this jutsu. But Hanata didn't even notice him, she just kept on walking straight towards the gate. That's when Nazashi noticed that she held a flower in her hands, could that be for Neji? Wondered Nazashi, no it couldn't be we left from the west gate, then why? Nazashi decided to stay in his hiding place and observe her. Hanata reached the gate, jumped up onto it and sat there looking out of the village for several minutes before speaking. Naruto-kun, she said in a low voice, but Nazashi could still hear her using his advanced hearing. A. N. I'm gonna call Naruto by his proper name again. What the hell? Did she figure out that it's me? Panicked Naruto already considering several ways to keep her quiet. Naruto-kun, it's been five and a half years, continued Hanata, since you left. Yeah, she's right it has been that long, agreed Naruto considering the seasons. She actually keeps track. He wondered. Why did you leave? Why did you have to go? Hanata said now in a strained voice. I know you weren't that well liked by the village, but, did you really have to go? As she said this Naruto could hear quiet crying. She's crying, why? Naruto was now confused. Naruto-kun, I should have told you, before you left, I, 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 I was too scared, back then, but now, if only you would come back, I would tell you now, I would tell you that. Hanata hesitated making sure that there was no one around. 
I love you, Naruto-kun, I love you with all my heart. Naruto recoiled in shock, shush shush she lll loves me. Naruto's mind managed to stutter out. No way, Naruto instantly composed himself again, she doesn't love the real me. She doesn't love the half-demon. She's living in ignorance and doesn't know about my past, she would hate me just like the rest of those f-bastards, if she knew, concluded Naruto. Hanata cried for a little while longer before wiping off her tears throwing the flower over the wall and walking away, whispering, please come back soon, Naruto-kun. Naruto sat there for a few more minutes digesting everything he had heard. She would be perfect, all I would have to do is, yay I can pull that off, yes, yes, yes. Naruto was ecstatic. Yes, she is prefect, said Naruto in an evil tone with an evil smile and an evil chuckle. Yes, she will definitely be perfect, mused Naruto, now all I have to do is make preparations and tie up loose ends. Several hours later, Naruto dressed in black shorts and a grey t-shirt, without his face mask, was standing at the edge of the forest looking over at the three log training area. He kneeled down to pet his toad, thanks Gamakichi, and gave it a cookie. The toad munched down the cookie and disappeared. I prefer foxes for surveillance, but in this village they're a little risky. All right, here goes, thought Naruto talking a deep breath and started to slowly walk toward the logs. As he got closer a small figure became more and more visible. The figure was sitting with her back to the center log and her face buried in her hands, which were resting on top of her knees. Faint sobs could be heard coming from the girl. Naruto walked up to her and knelt down, Hanata-chan, what's wrong? I failed him. She sobbed out, not even looking up. Failed? Asked Naruto in a caring tone. I'm sure you didn't fail anyone, reassured Naruto. Yes, yes. I failed him, Hanata trailed off as a thought crossed her mind, Hanata-chan. Nobody calls me that. Hanata's head suddenly shot up to look at whom she was talking to. N.A. Naruto-kun. Asked Hanata in an unsure tone, is it really him? Yeah, Hanata-chan, it's me, answered Naruto with a slight smile. Oh, Naruto-kun, said Hanata and threw her arms around the blonde boy, crying on his shoulder. I gotta thank Raiko next time I see him for teaching me about this kind of stuff, thought Naruto with a silent chuckle. He's sure got a hell of a lot more class than Ero Senen. It's alright Hanata-chan, comforted Naruto, everything will be fine. Naruto put one hand on her back and the other on her head. He gently stroked her hair while whispering comforting words in her ear. After a little while Hanata managed to calm down enough to speak coherently. Oh Naruto-kun, I'm so glad you're back, she said with a shy smile. Really? Asked Naruto somewhat teasingly. Yes. Oh, it's so good to have you back Naruto-kun, Hanata hugged Naruto tighter. This is like a dream. My prayers have been answered. It's good to be back, said Naruto with a content but sad sigh. Hanata pulled away from him slightly, even though her body protested, to look into his now darker blue eyes. Caringly she asked, why, Naruto-kun? Why what, Hanata-chan? Asked Naruto softly. Why did you leave? She asked with a downcast eyes. Oh that, Naruto's mood darkened slightly, you know when the village that you almost de-protecting hates you, the person that you save resents you for it and there's no one that really cares for you, what's the point of staying? Said Naruto softly and coldly. Oh, Naruto-kun, said Hanata and started crying again. And I'm to blame for this too, I'm so sorry, she kept repeating. Nothing to be sorry for Hanata-chan, comforted Naruto. Really, she had nothing at all to do with my leaving. Naruto-kun, I should have told you a long time ago, Hanata said in just above a whisper. Told me what Hanata-chan. Naruto-kun, I, I I I'll love you, Hanata said blushing as red as a cherry. Um, Hanata-chan is a good K, thought Naruto. N.O. Don't lose sight of the objective. Naruto gently and looked at Hanata. I love you too Hanata-chan, said Naruto caringly. Why are you crying Hanata-chan? I'm happy, answered Hanata. I'm so, so happy, that you're here now, with me, said Hanata. Hanata broke looked at Naruto curiously. Naruto-kun, why do you have fangs? O.S. Didn't consider that, cursed Naruto. Tell her about the QB. Hell no. I'm not going to wash by plan down the drain. It's a, it's just something related to my blood limit, 
replied Naruto inwardly happy at the look in her eyes. She bought it. Phew. Quick save. Not really a lie either. Hanata's look went from understanding to curiosity once again. I'm curious, Naruto-kun, when did you return? She asked of her newfound lover. Just now, several hours ago, replied Naruto. How did you get in? Followed up Hanata. You mean how does a class S missing nin make his way inside the leaf village? Asked Naruto chuckling. Hanata nodded, slightly surprised that he called himself a class S missing nin. Why such negativity Naruto-kun? Naruto noticed the surprise on Hanata's face. Crap, I must not be officially rated as class S just hope she doesn't get suspicious. Damn it, I'm having too many slip-ups. Well, I did grow up in this village. I know the less guarded places, explained Naruto, but chose to omit mention of his stealth skills and jutsus. No need for her to be curious about my training. Naruto-kun is still great, said Hanata here face lighting up. Hanata then suddenly frowned, you're not going to leave again are you? Questioned Hanata with tears in her eyes. No, don't worry Hanata-chan, I'm not going anywhere, I'll stay here with you, said Naruto once again sealing their lips. At least for the time being, thought Naruto. I'm gonna go talk with Suna tomorrow, said Naruto confidently. You mean you came to me first? Hanata asked shyly with a slight blush. Yeah, replied Naruto softly. How come? She continued. Because I realized during my journey that I really like you, answered Naruto in a caring tone. God, I feel so bad lying to her, thought Naruto with a pang of regret going through his heart. It's gotten late, Hanata-chan, said Naruto. Yeah, replied Hanata sadly, we have to go home now. Um, actually Hanata-chan, I don't have a place to go to, said Naruto sorrowfully. Well it's alright really, he continued with a fake smile, I'll just sleep in some tree in the forest. He turned and slowly started walking toward the forest. Hanata contemplated for a bit, but in the end could not stand the thought of her lover sleeping in the forest. Wait Naruto-kun, cried Hanata, don't go. Naruto couldn't help but smirk mischievously, so far so good. She ran up to him and grabbed his arm then blushing furiously said, you can sleep over at my place. Really, exclaimed Naruto, but will your family actually let me stay? He continued sadly. Don't worry Naruto-kun, I can sneak you in. Trust me, said Hanata pulling Naruto in the direction of her house. All right Hanata-chan, I'll trust you, said Naruto and followed her. Hanata and Naruto successfully snuck in via a very well-hidden back door and were soon within the safety of Hanata's room. Inwardly Naruto chuckled evilly, this is it, thank you very much Hanata. Not its mission start. While Hanata had her back turned, Naruto quickly did a few hand seals. Then he walked up to her. Within five seconds Hanata's body fell limp into Naruto's arms. Naruto gently put her in bed and whispered, sleep now Hanata, you've been a great help. I'm sorry for all this, but I'll at least give you the gift of life. Naruto then pulled out a scroll from his pocket, put in on the floor and quickly unrolled it. In a cloud of smoke the scroll was gone, but in its place appeared black clothing, a holster, a katana and a backpack. Naruto quickly put all this on and looked very much like he had for the Junin exam with several exceptions. Instead of a kunai he had throwing knives, he also wore a black hat that was specially made to be longer at the back to completely cover all of Naruto's hair and end at the bottom of the neck and on the top of his left sleeve he had the emblem of the nine tails in B red. Before moving out Naruto did a final check and grew his nails by several millimeters, perfect, the conditions couldn't be better, the dark of the night covers me, soon it is busy with Sasuke at the hospital and most of the village is going to be or already is asleep. Well, time to go, thought Naruto and with a few hand seals he disappeared. Flashback. The mission parameters are simple, you are to assassinate five Hyuga clan leaders and the head of the main family, said Itachi in a cool tone. Simple. You call that simple, yelled Naruto. The parameters are simple, continued Itachi, I didn't say anything about the E. Naruto just sighed. That's another reason you're going alone, it will be easier to get one person into the Hyuga Manor. Still no response from Naruto. Itachi then hit Naruto upside the head, hey you listening. Damn it, let me think, yelled Naruto, I'm trying to memorize their faces here. Not to mention get well acquainted with the Manor blueprints. 
and figure how the hell I'm gonna take on one of the most powerful bloodlines in the world. You can do that later, said Itachi absent-mindedly, I'm just trying to remind you of all the things you have to do on a missions. It's not like I haven't done this before, yelled an aggravated Naruto. Itachi paid him no heed, first of, remember that you'll need to bring back the heads as proof. Damn it Itachi, screamed Naruto rubbing his temples, you're really not helping me right now. Itachi gave him an unreadable look and continued his lecture as if nothing happened. End flashback. Hyuga Hyashi was strolling around the Hyuga Manor enjoying the peaceful night and thinking about the turbulent events of the Junin exam. Hanata lost again, not surprising really, she's gotten stronger, though still not good enough, mused Hyashi. Then there was that grass nin, terrifying, Sasuke was still convulsing when I saw him in the hospital. I wonder what that dujutsu really did to him. Hyashi's thoughts went back to the grass nin, for some reason, I can't shake the feeling of danger from him, a, n, more on Sasuke's condition and effects of Naruto's dujutsu in the next chapter. Just then Hyashi heard the sound of metal hitting metal, what the? Thought Hyashi as he went over next to the door from where the sound came. A few seconds later, he heard a ripping sound followed closely by a thud. That sounded too much like a body dropping, figured Hyashi and swung open the door. He was prepared for almost anything except this. Jeez, are all the Hugo this easy? This was the first one to retaliate, granted the rest were asleep, but still. Naruto's musings were see off when the door burst open, without warning, to show the last person Naruto wanted to see, Hyashi. S. I was going to leave him for last. As soon as Naruto finished that thought the alarm sounded, god damn it. Now not only Hyashi, but the rest of the Hyuga. Naruto mentally cursed in one long colorful sentence. They looked at each other for a second, it's definitely that grass nin from the exam, thought Hyashi instantly recognizing the assassin. Naruto realized that Hyashi was in shock and hence saw his opportunity. No time to lose, he's not battle ready, thought Naruto instantly coming up with the next action. Naruto disappeared and reappeared right behind Hyashi. Hyashi, however, had other plans, I may not survive, but at least I'll injure him, he thought. S. A Hyuga D, can't feel chakra in my H, damn you Hyashi. Cursed Naruto, I'm gonna have to use it then concluded Naruto as he fell down to his hands and knees. Demon regeneration, said Naruto pulling out Kyuubi's chakra. A thin red cloud developed around Naruto and lingered there for about two seconds. It was then quickly absorbed into Naruto's body, mostly his chest. The only downfall right now is that I can't hide this much chakra. No sooner than he had healed himself, Naruto heard a commotion at the end of the hallway. Looking up he saw three Hyuga guards running toward him. Grabbing Hyashi's head, Naruto quickly shadow stepped away without a particular destination. Elsewhere in the leaf village, Jiraiya was up to his usual business when he suddenly sensed a certain chakra, that chakra signature, I'd recognize it anywhere, it's too unique, but what's it doing here? Jiraiya instantly forgot about his previous activities and rushed to find the chakra. Meanwhile, Naruto had shadow stepped into an open field in the middle of the Hyuga Manor. Turning around he saw two clan leaders running side by side toward him, luck. Without another second's delay Naruto charged up two Raisingans, behind his back. The Hyuga were too shocked that he had just appeared almost directly in front of them and did not have the time to react properly. So when the Hyuga got close enough, Naruto s each Raisingan into one of the clan leaders. By this time the rest of the manor was already awake, so Naruto was being attacked by two dozen Hyuga, s. 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 Cursed Naruto, these odds are hard enough, but the Anbu are undoubtedly on their way and not to mention any other ninja in the area, I don't need that. I can't handle the entire village. Fight off these, make for the wall, contemplated Naruto while parrying off attacks, and then hightail it the hell out of here, concluded Naruto. Sounds like a plan. Chakra ripple, whispered Naruto and a small wave of chakra hit all the people around Naruto pushing them back. Naruto did several dozen hand seals and heavily stomped his foot on the ground, Kinjutsu, Dotan, Desert Sea, he said. Instantly the entire field around him turned into quicksand, sucking down everyone unfortunate enough to step on it, which was everyone, except Naruto of course. Naruto's opponents tried to counter this by putting more chakra into their feet and were absolutely shocked when that actually worked against them. 
Naruto noticed the looks of shock and horror on their faces and smirked. The beauty of Desert Sea is that it pulls in chakra. So the more you use to try and keep yourself afloat to faster it will pull you in. Naruto blessed his natural affinity for earth jutsus. Upon noticing that most of the Hugo was sucked in at least up to the knees he did two hand seals, solidify. The quicksand sea instantly became solid ground effectively trapping all of Naruto's opponents. Now, thought Naruto. He once again made a chakra cushion under his feet while performing several hand seals, katen, grand hausenka, he whispered and started rotating around while shooting out fireballs. Making it look like he was firing them in all direction at the same time. Some of the Hyuga were able to duck under the attack and other more powerful ones were able to use Kaiten to block the projectiles and free themselves from the ground. The ones that weren't able to do either D, of course. By either burning to death or if they got lucky enough and the Shuriken inside the flames hit a critical area then they D a much more painless deaths. The survivors instantly retaliated by firing a grand fireball straight at Naruto from all sides. Fuatan, wind barrier, said Naruto. Wind swirled all around him and blocked all the fireballs. However Naruto didn't stop there. Dokumari, poison cloud. A, N. Dokumari is what that Final Fantasy website said. The wind barrier suddenly changed color to green and Naruto made the wind from the barrier move outward in circular motion around himself, consequently spreading out the poison as it went. A, N. In poison cloud, Naruto can use any poison. Naruto had used a high-level poison that need only touch the skin to take effect. Inhaling it causes dizziness and disorientation, but once the poison has sunk into the skin, which is after about two minutes, the person d. Most of the Hyuga just held their breath and thought that they were safe, some however did actually activate their chitin fully blocking the poison. During the spread of the poison Naruto had made enough cage bushin to match all his opponents and instantly attack them. The clones that were fighting infected Hyuga, just fought to pull time and waited until their opponent d. However the ones that were fighting the smarter Hyuga all used Cobra Strike. What Naruto's opponents didn't know was that the clones, for the most part, were merely a distraction so that Naruto could escape. The fact that most of Naruto's enemies either d or were in critical condition didn't bother Naruto the least bit as long as he could get out of there. When Naruto saw his chance for an escape, he instantly took it and made a dash for the wall of the manor. As he was going to jump over, two guards tried to stop him, but fell d as Naruto flew by them at an insane speed. Jiraiya had heard the alarm and was closing in on the Hyuga manor along with at least a dozen Anbu and regular Junin, when he just barely noticed a black figure running at top speed toward the western gate. Figuring that that must be the intruder, he quickly changed direction to chase him. Naruto raced through the village and the gates were soon within his sight. There were at least 10 guards compared to the usual three. He knew that it would be a long battle if he tried getting out the conventional way, so he jumped down from the rooftops and onto the ground. As he continued running on the ground, he did several hand seals and said, Dotten, ground reaper no jutsu. The ground that Naruto had just ran on was lifted up with each passing step, Dotten condense, whispered Naruto. The newly raised ground behind Naruto condensed itself into a boulder, Naruto kept up these two jutsus until the boulder became about the size of a small house. He then attached as many chakra strings as he could to the boulder and yanked on them with full force. Boulder strike, he yelled and flung the enormous mass straight at the gate. Not surprisingly the gate and most of the wall around it, broke as soon as the boulder had collided with it. The explosion, that resulted, had caused all the guard ninjas to pass out and Naruto found that he now had a straight, unguarded path laid out in front of him. Once I'm out the gate it's over, thought Naruto contently as he kept up his speed even once outside the village. A little over a mile outside the village Naruto stopped, sensing a familiar presence, Itachi Oni-chan. I take it it's done. He asked. Naruto turned around to find those two familiar crimson eyes staring at him, yes, answered Naruto in a cold tone, there were complications, but that's usual. Yeah. I heard the explosion from here, said Itachi, Naruto snorted. Anyway, you get quota. Asked Itachi. Even more, answered Naruto talking off his hat and running his hand through his hair, I got the younger of the main house heirs. Could have gotten both, replied Itachi in a questioning tone, while handing Naruto his Akatsuki cloak. Naruto put it on, but did not answer as he turned his head sideways and sniffed the air. We should get out of here, 
he said quickly. Damn it. I thought I managed to avoid pursuit, and why of all people does it have to be him? You're not going anywhere, came a voice from behind Naruto. Let's go, said Naruto, we can outrun him. What are you doing back here after five years and in his company? Jiraiya continued questioning. And why the Akatsuki cloak? Mentally questioned Jiraiya. Isn't it obvious, Ero Senen? Replied Naruto coldly with a sideways glare at Jiraiya. Could it be? Wondered Jiraiya, have our worst fears come true? Go Naruto. Ordered Itachi, I'll take care of him. What? No, it's my mess'll clean it up, protested Naruto. Go, you're battle-worn, you won't be able to handle him, reasoned Itachi in a commanding tone. Leaning his head to Naruto's ear he whispered, deliver the evidence to the Akatsuki and we'll meet up at our usual hotel. Fine, reluctantly agreed Naruto, then put his hand on Itachi's shoulder and said just loud enough for Jiraiya to hear, make it back safe, Itachi Oni-chan. Jiraiya's eyes widened at the way Naruto addressed Itachi. Naruto gave a last glare at Jiraiya and disappeared into the forest. Jiraiya tried to follow, but was stopped by Itachi, your fight is with me. Jiraiya grimaced a little but seeing as there was no other way, got into a fighting stance. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.